Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement. I'm going to jail! Well, actually, it's the opposite of that. I'm not going to jail! Yeah, for all the new viewers, that's like the fifth time I've had the privilege of saying that in, what, two years? If you want a rundown of the various legal and, I guess, violent skirmishes that this channel has gone through over the past few years, check out this gripping bogan noir we released a while ago. But the specific reason I'm not going to jail this time is because the incredibly powerful gambling lobby very graciously drop their private prosecution against me at a cancer-riddled whistleblower. So, time to crack out the champagne. I'm not going to jail on the whim of an organisation that the New South Wales Crime Commission have found funds itself and its lawyers, mind you, with the proceeds of crime. Sorry, this is probably very confusing for everyone because I was dragged through court for this shit and I myself found it confusing. You know what? I bet that the lawyers prosecuting me found it confusing too, but I didn't want to fund their prosecution against me further by taking that bet. So let this video explain to you, as best it can, how I could have ended up in prison for the crime of someone else pointing out crimes. And if you do understand this video, for the love of God, can you give Naked Lunch a crack and tell me what happened in that movie? All right, gamers, here's the any percent speed run of what happened. I'm in New South Wales, that's the most popular state in Australia. New South Wales is the gambling capital of the world. We love to gamble using poker machines. We call them pokies. The lobby group that represents the main venues that contain pokies is Clubs New South Wales. It's very easy to launder the proceeds of crime by putting it through those pokies. Clubs New South Wales employee Troy Stoll's leaked to Parliament that 95% of Clubs New South Wales venues are not complying with anti-money laundering regulations. Clubs New South Wales sue him for this, draining him of hundreds of thousands of dollars, forcing him to sell his house. I cover this suit in September of 2021. Months later, Troy discovers he he has developed terminal cancer. My producer is the first to interview Troy after the cancer diagnosis, where they discuss his cancer, his prognosis, and the ongoing legal battle with Clubs New South Wales. The interview is put out on this channel. And then Clubs New South Wales had, as you kids would say on the net, a meltdown. For the first few months after this interview came out, I thought I was being stalked. Actually, why don't we let past Geordies tell this part, eh? I thought that I was being stalked. I'm rarely ever at home. What happened every couple of weeks when I actually do go through the front door of my house is I could feel that someone was coming up behind me. Clubs New South Wales took out an ex parte application in the Federal Court of Australia to run a criminal contempt of court prosecution against Troy Stoll's and myself. Troy for the heinous crime of being interviewed and me for the heinous crime of someone else interviewing Troy. Just so everyone knows, that's not me in the interview. I haven't had plastic surgery and straightened my hair chemically. That's my producer. Now, ex parte. You know what that means? Not because you weren't alive in 1 AD. No excuses, pick, pick up, up your game. game. It basically means a decision made in court with only one party present. Even in f***ing show trials, they have two parties present. Troy wasn't there. I wasn't there. How could we be? We didn't know it was on! Usually an ex parte is reserved for the most serious, dire situations. I'm talking about someone's life being in jeopardy. Shipments of drugs just about to arrive. Someone abuses the YouTube copyright system and... Actually, that is pretty much what happened. I probably shouldn't have used that as the gag there. Clubs and their lawyers basically made the argument to the Federal Court of Australia that this YouTube video was so dangerous and intimidating that they had to be granted the right to prosecute over it without my lawyers even being given the opportunity to point out some silly little facts like, I wasn't there! In my opinion, it would take pretty accommodating lawyers to actually go ahead with such an insane ploy. Luckily for clubs, it really seems like they had been stocked in that particular category. The ex parte application is granted without my knowledge, which is how it works. And I spend a month thinking I'm being stalked as a result. How silly of me. Why would anyone want to know where I live? Turns out it was just one of clubs New South Wales's goons trying to serve me by private prosecution. It did get me thinking, why do we still bother with process servers like DoorDash exists now? Especially when this process server couldn't even find me. And because they couldn't find me, clubs eventually got permission from the court to email me my prosecution. Imagine that. Imagine waking up to an email from the gambling lobby saying, we're trying to put you in jail and you have to respond otherwise you will go to jail. Also, if you tell anyone about this, you're gonna go to jail. I'm lucky that didn't go to junk mail. 
This was all under a suppression order, meaning that it was illegal for anyone to report on this prosecution. Not that the Australian press would have anyway, but it was illegal for me to even tell anyone. If I had a flatmate and accidentally told him, Beep! that was my life. The most annoying part of the Monopoly board. Anyway, I go to court wearing my court clothes, which is essentially just my work uniform now. I honestly feel like one of those NRL players. Like, it's just, why am I constantly being taken to this particular building? I really genuinely don't understand. So going after me and a dying whistleblower sort of starts to kick up a bit of a fire about the power of clubs in New South Wales and money laundering through poker machines. You put your dirty cash in, you get your clean cash out, you take your receipt or check and you shake it all about. You do your money launder and you get the f*** out. That's what it's all about. This might be a surprise to you, but not everyone in the state is cool with money laundering being easier than getting out of a Wilson car park. One of the main solutions is the cashless gaming card that allows limits to be placed on spending and allows police to see if the money from meth is getting turned into money from Queen of the Nile. The New South Wales Crime Commission comes out with a report that details that billions of dollars of the proceeds of crime are washed through pokey machines every year, and to combat this scourge, it recommends adopting the cashless gaming card. In response, Clubs New South Wales initiate a jihad against the proposed cashless gaming card. The prosecution of Troy and myself was just legal fatwas in this jihad. They launched custom political campaigns against politicians that back the cashless gaming card, including Helen Dalton, an independent holding one seat. Think about that. Just an act of pure intimidation designed to warn others not to step out of line. As you can imagine, the arguments against the cashless gaming card are that level of shit that you can only get from AM radio. You know those arguments like, Oh, cash on a gaming card? That's a bit, um, elitist, isn't it? How? Uh, I don't know. They're honestly that lazy and half assed The best argument seemed to be, Oh, well, this is all a bit complicated. I mean, who's ever heard of putting money on a card? You know your nan can't figure out a card. She's got very few joys in life. It's only chucking in 50s until she's got no retirement funds left. Just some old fashioned fun. If you're Australian, you already know how stupid that is. You know how difficult and annoying it is to get into a club. It's like you're doing a clarity test at the Church of Scientology. They make you fill out all these ridiculous questions like what's your deepest, darkest secret? And then if they don't like your shoelaces, they kick you out anyway. Believe me, I know. At this time, Clubs New South Wales CEO Josh Landis is going on a bit of a media rampage, desperately trying to turn public sentiment against the gaming card when he goes too far. Says the Premier of New South Wales, Dominic Perrottet, wants the cashless gaming card because of his Catholic gut. He's fired because of this. Now look, this guy wanted me in jail. I'm also from a Catholic background. Even I can say, cancel culture has gone too far. They clearly wanted him out because they pushed the little jihad against a dying whistleblower way too far. And so they just threw a dart at the words he said that day and pretended to have a heart attack over whatever it landed on. But whatever, I'll take it. That's a win. You're very mean and offensive, Josh, and I hope you've had time to reflect on the hurt you've inflicted on this innocent man. Obviously, it's a very sought after role being the head of an organization funded by the proceeds of crime. So of course, I'm imagining a very talented crop of individuals put their hand up to run that, including a man who's attempted to chuck my producer in prison and tried to bankrupt me. The man, the myth, the legend that is. Surprise, Stitch. Heard you are looking for a stud with leadership experience, bros. Wow. That might have been the first job that John Barillaro has ever applied for where he didn't have to change the criteria of it so he could fill the role. Just a week or two after the old CEO was fired, Troy settles his civil case with Clubs New South Wales and they also drop their prosecution against him. So now he can suffer cancer without worrying about going to jail at least. They also drop their charge against me and pay my legal costs in exchange for giving them nothing. A total and utter retreat by Clubs off you vultures. Anyway, I'm now considering my legal options against clubs because I do think that this was somewhat a malicious prosecution to say the least and a gross waste of court's time, not to mention their resources. And I don't think that that should ever be repeated again. So yeah, there's the story of how I avoided jail most recently. Oh, and I also forgot at some point my house was firebombed during this timeline. Now, just need to get this on the record now that we're back. Moist Critical, did you know this the net is a legend?
I can't thank you enough for covering and bringing attention to the firebombing story, especially when the entire mainstream press in this country wouldn't. Especially when it's not even your fucking country. Commendations, my friend. We are so used to being endlessly clobbered in the press and the useful idiots of the press that we forget, no, there are actually intelligent, reasonable human beings on the planet that fully get what's happening, even when they're from Florida or the UK. I'm looking at you, Pyrocynical. Thanks again for bringing a lot of attention to it in the first place and being able to condense two years of events into 10 minutes, which is a skill we clearly lack. And again, I'm blown away that you have done it. Not just because you did such an accurate job of it, you also did a far better job than the entire press here when we have hundreds of drones at the ABC9 and Sky who are so stupid they couldn't even do it if they weren't paid to say the exact opposite. And look, if you think that the whole the press is out to get me is a bit hyperbolic, well, stick around for a couple of videos. You definitely won't be figuring it afterwards. It's not me, it's just the way that the system is set up. And look, look I don't have time to express media bias and how it operates in this country right now. I'm just saying that with all these extra eyes on us and the new subs, we've got to do some housekeeping here. A lot of you were asking about Christo's family dog. The dog did survive being stomped on by the cops during his arrest. She's like the Jimmy Carter of dogs. She was old then. We're surprised she's alive now. She's still kicking on. Next item on the list, there's a state election coming up and we've got a lot of coverage on that to do and a lot of coverage already finished. Our patrons have already seen a lot of that. This upcoming election is a big one. I honestly think that this is more important than our federal election we really have to do all we can to see that these corporate consultants are replaced with the Labor government so we have an actual functioning government in New South Wales. That'll be a nice change after 10 years of that. That will stop the criminal levels of land clearing in this state. It'll also make hospitals properly function so nurses don't keep sneaking over the border to Victoria like the North Korean refugees. So what does this mean for you, dear new subscriber that is probably not from Australia? It means that things are going to get very local very specific, very quickly. Just, Just like, like this video. video. So if you are from the international crowd, stick around. We've got some staples like crazy bar stories and shitting on journalists along with some international stories we've been working on for a while. Oh, and in case you didn't see, we've got a playlist of our biggest investigations. Check that in the description because if you thought you've seen crazy stuff so far, there's also some crazy stuff in there. So check that out and uh, thank you for all the kind words in the comments. It humbles me greatly that you would be interested in a country that doesn't have such immortals walking amongst it as Zach Braff. Hang on, let me just actually check if he's still alive. And... No, no, we're good. Hey, let's hear it for Zach, huh? Like and scrub scribe if you like scrub star Zach Braff. See you next time. Please share and comment below. Come in. You put your dirty cash in, you get your clean cash out. You take your receipt or check and you shake it all about. You do your money laundering, you get the f out. That's what it's all about.